cannot please God. Okay? Cannot please God. And it says that we're hostile to God. Hostile means we have an enmity, we have a hatred towards God. Okay? All right. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Corinthians or the second Corinthians. Got those first. In verse 14, it says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? Not able. Not able. The natural person. We talked about this last time. What does it take to be the natural person? You're born. You're born. You don't have to do anything to be the natural person. You're not born in the state of neutrality, and then later you become the natural person. You're born, the natural person. Now, the natural person doesn't accept the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Now, this is part of what it means by the will. Okay, The unregenerate person looks at the gospel as foolishness. They're restrained by that. Okay? You know, They're exercising their will in a genuine sense, when they reject God because they're saying, hey, that's stupid. Why would I want to believe in something like that? It's foolishness. The cross is foolishness to those who are perishing and is unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Unable. Not able to understand. Not able. Now, you have to understand that not able doesn't mean that they don't intellectually get it. Okay? I mean, a, a, an unbeliever can intellectually Know what you believe. Yeah, you believe that this guy, Jesus, lived this perfect life and died on a cross. and It means he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand what you're so excited about. He didn't, he, it's not, it doesn't even appeal to him at all. He's unable to understand what you're going through. He's unable to identify or relate to you in any significant way. And we looked at the term flesh, and we said that the term flesh means what in Scripture? The nature. Nature. It means the nature. The fallen Fallen nature. human nature. Fallen human nature. For the most part. That's, that, that's not 100% always used that way. Sometimes it does mean meat. But it's not the meat suit that does the sinning. Remember, Jesus had a body. Jesus didn't sin. We will have a body in heaven. Or we will be without the nature to sin. And in John chapter 3, in verse 5, it says... Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Okay? That which is born of flesh is flesh. In other words, the flesh doesn't give birth to anything but flesh. The human nature cannot produce the things of the Spirit. And then on the flip side of that, it doesn't say the Spirit plus the nature bring life. That's not what it says. The spirit gives birth to spirit. The flesh brings birth. In other words, it doesn't say that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit, along with the help of the flesh, is spirit. It doesn't say that. It says that he that is born of the spirit is spirit. The spirit gives birth to the spirit. The flesh gives birth to flesh. It cannot overlap in any way, shape, or form. Now, look down here at John chapter uh, chapter 3 and verse 19. Who's born of the Spirit? Christians. So, well, we still are fleshly. Yeah, but you have two natures now working in you. Okay, so you, that Paul describes that, that you're not one nature anymore. He says, I see two laws well, working, two working within you. But God doesn't need any help from you to give birth to the Spirit. It's not the Spirit plus the flesh give birth to the Spirit. It's the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. Okay? In the verse, Holy Spirit. Yes, the yes. Holy Spirit. That's, that's what, yeah, sorry if I was ambiguous about that. Born of Adam, something and we have there. to be reborn of right. God. And this is the judgment that light came into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their works were evil. Okay? For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. Okay? Hate. So not only do they uh, 
love evil. So this person who's supposedly free loves evil and hates the light. He loves evil and he hates the light. <laughs> so this is kind of cramping in on the idea of freedom, right? I mean, do you understand that this is kind of, we're kind of whittling down this idea that we're free to cooperate with God or reject God when God pours out his grace. And that's due to the fact that we're dead. We're not sick, we're dead. And a dead person can't cooperate. A dead person needs regeneration. Um, so we're not free. And furthermore, it says here, in John chapter 6, 644, just write it down because we went through all these last week and I'm going to use it again. John 644, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Okay? So no one can come. Now, the unless the Father who sent me draws him, we'll talk about that again. I talked about that last week, but we'll talk about that again when we talk about um, <coughs> irresistible grace. Okay? Uh, but no one can come, all right? No one's able to come. And in verse 63 of that same chapter, it is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh, is no help at all. Or the flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. No thing. Okay? I like the way R.C. Sproul does this. He does these little, his little R.C. Sproul voices. Nothing isn't a little something. Okay? And when we say nothing, we really mean it. The Bible means nothing. It doesn't mean a little something. And what the Arminian wants us to believe is that little something is the pivot point between salvation and damnation. Mm -hmm. So what they mean by a little something is really everything. But the Bible doesn't say you, you, you get everything out of this. It says you, nothing. Your, your, will, your fallen human nature contributes nothing. It can't. It's rendered paralyzed. It's rendered paralyzed. We hate God. And in John, and in John chapter... Um, 8 and verse 34 it says that we're slaves. Did you just say first John? No. John. Just John. Gospel of John it says we're slaves in verse 34. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. And he needs the Son to set him free. It says the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. Not the Son and you. Mm -hmm. Say, now if the Son and you set yourself free, then hey, you're free. The Son has to set you free, and then you're free indeed. And in verse 43, it says of that same chapter, Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my words. Cannot hear. Seems pretty clear to me. Well, if somebody wants to say that, in, that the fallen human nature cannot please God, is hostile to God, thinks that the thinks that God that the things of God is foolishness, loves evil, hates light, cannot come, can do no thing, is a slave, and cannot hear, and still want to say, well, I'm free, <laughs> is the height of delusion. Okay, that's the height. <laughs> that is the height of delusion. Height. Yes. I probably say this every single time, but I'm like, to me, it boils down to, is your God sovereign or yeah. not? Mm -hmm. Sovereign means sovereign. It doesn't mean that you get to have a little bit in there. <laughs> it's like sovereign is sovereign. And, and uh, the idea of, uh, I think I said the first week too, and just to reaffirm what you're saying, is that the, uh, the whole idea of Calvinism is really based on two points implicitly and explicitly stated in the Bible. It's not just all implicit, it's, it's explicit as well. And that is, is that God's sovereign and that we're in total need of God's grace. We're not in just a little bit of need of God's grace. We're in total need of this. We're in yeah, total need of God's grace, including our will. <laughs> our, including our will. God is grace. Now this is, now what they want to do is they want to separate this nature, the nature that you have from, from will. Okay, from your will. That's not 
the case. This is not looking at this thing properly. You do what you want to do. You do what your nature dictates that you do. You don't have, we've used this as a, an example for salvation before, but it's the same as far as your will is concerned. You don't have a will in the sense that I have a, a, a wallet, you know, it's like I have my mind, my emotions, and my will. No, you, you will to do what your mind and your emotions tell you to do. That's what your will is. You are a being who makes choices, okay? And those choices aren't independent, aren't separated from your nature, okay? Your nature dictates it. So you look at a guy, and let's say he's a crazy, deranged individual, and he's off chopping people's heads off, okay? He's mm. out there ch ch chopping people's heads <laughs> off. Now, would you go to him, this is like working backwards, would you go to him and you would say, now look, mister, if you just stop, you know, if you just, you know, you could be a normal person. No, he, he's chopping people's heads off because his mind and his emotions are driving what he wants to do. And you never do, this is one thing you have to understand, you never do ultimately what you really don't want to do. You always act in accordance to your nature, to what you want to do. Okay, so. Even when you hypnotize them. Yeah. So somebody might reduce your choices to two. Somebody might pull a gun on you and say your money or your life. Okay. Uh, but even in that situation, if you choose to give them your money, you're basically saying, I value my life. At this point in time, I value my life more than I value my money. Therefore, it renders my decision to give that person my money. I'm not saying that all things are equal. Okay, not all things are equal. But in any given circumstance, you say, well, I don't want to go to work. We'll say this all the time. We used to have this conversation at work. So, well, I don't want to be here. I said, well, then why are you here? So, well, I have to pay my bills. Then okay, you want so to be here because you, you want the bills. Right. You want to, your desire <laughs> to, to pay your bills outweighs your desire to stay home. You always do what your nature says to do, and you're always restricted by what your nature says to do. So your nature restricts you. So you're not free to do what God says you can't do. Okay, that's, that's just basic logic. You're just free, not free to say what God says you're not free to do. Now, again, uh, we don't look like we're under compulsion. You know, you came here freely. You came here. Now, on occasion, God even overrides those, those decisions. Sometimes God steps down in history, and I've heard this a million times from, well, I'm slightly exaggerating, from pastors that say things like, well, God's a gentleman, and he would never interfere with what you want to do. And all Jonah. I, and I always think of the example of Jonah. I mean, that's a perfect example. Did God respect Jonah's decision? He I says, Jonah, know. you're going to go to uh, Nineveh. 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 And he says, no, I'm going to Tarshish. And God goes, oh, I'm going to respect I'm going to respect God. I'm going to respect Jonah's free will. Because he's, he's a gentleman. No, he said, no, Jonah, I'm going to make you want to go. Okay? Now the... You said you live, you live anywhere besides Utah. Mm -hmm. I said I would live anywhere but Utah. And here for oh, famous 20, last words. Six years? Right. Seven years? Right. The other example was he bombed is in <laughs> on the shores, I think it says. Yeah. Um, uh, the other example was that of which we started with reading with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was getting haughty, mm -hmm. and he said, hey, look, I'm going to humble you. He didn't respect yeah. his free will. He didn't respect his decision. When Nebuchadnezzar came out of it, he said, God's in heaven. He does what he wants among the peoples of earth. Like not what I, grass. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not what I wanted. He didn't say, hey, look, you know, what do you what would you like to have happen to you? God said, hey, this is what's gonna happen. Now probably the greatest example of this all in in terms of salvation is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was on his way to kill Christians. He was had letters from the synagogue to saying that he could do such a thing. And God didn't woo him. He didn't say, oh, come on. You know, you really want to. Isn't it so much better? Can't you see the arguments for the, for, for the uh, historicity of who Jesus is? And he just, he knocked him off of his horse. He says, I'm, I'm going to do this for you. I'm knocking you off your horse, and you will serve me. He says, and he says, and I will, he, sa he said to the, the prophet who was, I can't remember his he name. He said, Ananias. Uh, well, yeah, Ananias, right. 
Um, he said okay. to him, he said, I'm gonna, he says, you're going to receive this guy, Paul. I know you heard threats about him, goes, but you're going to receive him, and I'm going to show him what he must suffer for my name's sake. No he, free will. Then. No free will. He, he totally stepped in and violated mm-hmm. this idea of free will. Now, If anybody would have defied God, it would have been Saul. Yeah, it would have been Saul. And there was no, oh, yeah. hey, you want to cooperate with me? You don't want to cooperate with me. So the Arminian, semi-Pelagian view, I think, is, is wrong. Now, why do, why do people want this idea of free will? And I'll, uh, there's a couple things I want to I'm talk about here. I'm not a robot. It makes you feel like oh. you have some control. Yeah, okay, so control free. I would say there's two reasons, primarily two reasons why people would want to assert free will. And one of them is... I would say one of them is definitely rooted in defiance. Definitely rooted in defiance. And the second one may or may not be, okay? The second one may or may not be. What was the question? Why would what? Why would somebody want to believe in, 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 in free will? Why do they mm-hmm. demand? Uh, it, it's, it's at least a higher view, but I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not going to judge the motives. Uh, and that is is that uh, they want to free, free God from sin. In other words, it's an answer to the sin problem that we all face in this world. You know, like if God's sovereign, then why is there sin? That kind of thing. Okay, so... Oh, okay. So that didn't make sense, but now it does. They so want to free, free God, God from, from the sin. accusation of sin. Right. Sorry, I should so, say that. Okay. From the accusation yes, of sin. Yes, because everybody's like, if there is a God... Then why, why, you know, are, why are little babies dying? Right, right. Yeah. And we will yeah. answer that probably more when we talk about uh, unconditional election because that really kind of borders on sovereignty. But I kind of want to, as we're talking about free will, I want to talk about these two for just a second here. So number one, this defiance aspect, we see this just openly. People just want control. They just desire control over their life. They don't want to think of as God as being in control. They just simply say, no, well, then, you know, then I'm a robot, that kind of a thing. They just, they just want to have some control over their existence. Now, I'd rather be a robot. I'd rather be a robot and go to heaven, if that's what you mean. That's, <laughs> that's a reason. The yes. Only reason. So, this one is, is, some people have come up with elaborate arguments for freedom and their motive is to eliminate God uh, or um, have God not be accused of sin you know, or, or evil doing. And so they interject the idea of free will. So they say, well, you look at this thing that happens, this guy killing these people or whatever, and they say, well, wouldn't that, you know, wouldn't it be easy then if God could, if we just shove this off under the responsibility of man? Well, first of all, it is shoved off under the responsibility of man. Second of all, is free will doesn't solve the problem. It adds an extra layer. So some you're walking along the street, right? Somebody um, pulls a knife out and goes to stab your wife. Ooh. Good luck with that. What would you do? <laughs> Step back and watch your <laughs> Watch your have at it. Watch your have at it. Okay, all right. But if she didn't know any average Joe, ones, yeah, I would. I'd shoot I would them. <laughs> you would shoot him, right? Yeah. You would shoot him. Well, I, yeah. Yeah, I would defend her. Okay, so let's say let's anybody probably would. What's let's say I had that situation and I didn't defend Joyce at all and I just let her get stabbed to death, and somebody came to me and they said. Well, you know martial arts. You know, are you a coward? What? And I said, No, I'm not a coward. I've got to respect that person's freedom. Whoa. What? What? Does that solve the problem? No. 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 As a matter of fact, it, it just eggs, it, it eggs the problem. It eggs the problem on. And so, mm-hmm. we will talk a little bit more about the, the um, freedom of the responsibility of man, the freedom of man, and the sovereignty of God, and how that relates to evil, probably in lectures to come. But right now what I want to show is that God saying, oh, that i got to respect free will, doesn't, doesn't resolve God from evil. Okay? It doesn't resolve God from evil. 
it sounds nice. Oh, God doesn't, you know, God lets people have freedom because he wants people to genuinely love him and they go on these arguments. But that doesn't solve the problem at all. That, that person is just not really thinking the situation through. That just means that God cares more about, uh, you know, free will than he does not stopping sin. Yeah, that's all it does. So those two reasons right there, I think, are the two main reasons. It's just One is just defiance. People just want control over their existence. They don't want to think of God as predestining them or them not being able to have control of their life. The higher one sometimes comes as a result of trying to um, excuse God from evil, but it doesn't excuse God from evil. It just adds an extra problem that they haven't thought about. And it adds an extra problem which isn't even mentioned in the Bible. The idea of free will is not mentioned in the Bible. As a matter of fact, it's clearly spoken against. I think it would make people feel better as to that age-old, why do bad things happen? Yeah, that's that's why, is that they'll yeah, say, well, this adds. It makes adds. them feel better. But they're just not thinking it through. They're not thinking. Just like if somebody, and I, well, i got to respect their freedom, right? I'm a good guy. got to respect somebody to stab my wife. Right? Yeah. You, you'd think I'm more evil, especially if I could stop it, right? Well, definitely. Free, free will doesn't solve the problem. Okay, all right. All right, so that objection is answered, and then from this objection, I kind of want to go into one other objection that people have as a result of this, and that is, and that is, if God, okay, so let's, God commands all men everywhere to repent. Right? You cannot repent on your own without being reborn of God. Then is it unfair that God commands that which we're not able? Yes. Commands, that's the, the objection that flows from this. Did you say you cannot repent without being um, without being born of God? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just like in uh, Timothy where it says, you know, pray that God will grant them repentance to come to faith. Repentance has to be granted. So, yeah, it has to be granted or as a result of the new birth. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, the, the not fair kind of argument, but a little bit differently. Okay, so... Uh, he commands that which we are unable or incapable of doing. Now, first, the first thing I want to say to this is that this isn't anything new. First of all, God commands all kinds of things that we're not capable of. Yeah. As a matter of fact, God commands Don't that lie. you be perfect. Don't steal. No. Not, yeah, I mean, in totality, he commands the whole law. Mm -hmm. He puts that on you. Every failure of that isn't just, a, oh, well, I couldn't do it, therefore I'm resolved of the issue. Mm doesn't resolve the issue. It just means that God is holy and he commands unholy creatures to do things that they don't want to do. Now, the other example of this, and this is um, God commands, God didn't lower his standards when, when Adam and Eve fell into sin. Okay? He didn't lower his standards. No grading on a curve. Yeah, when Adam yes. and Eve fell into sin. So, Ans I think it was Anselm, uh, likened it to this, okay? So here's, here's man, okay? Here's the garden over here. Here's a garden over here. And, and God says to this man, I want you to go over here, and I want you to till this garden and keep it and all this stuff. I want you to do good in this garden. God says, now don't fall into this pit here. Okay, don't walk along and fall into this pit, because if you fall into this pit, things are going to be bad for you. And then guy, a guy comes along here, bang, falls. Now he's down here. And God says, why didn't you do what I commanded you? And the person down here says, I couldn't. Now, in the condition of the pit, you can't. It's true. Let's just let's for argument's sake that to say that the walls are slippery, he doesn't have a ladder, it's too high for him to get a rope, he can't call for help, you know, all those things that you think of. Let's see, he exhausted all that stuff. Does God come along then and say, Oh, all right, well I guess you couldn't. So I guess 
The garden doesn't matter then, and all my standards for what I wanted you to do in the garden now don't matter. Does he do that? No, no he doesn't. The guy is in the pit because of his own choices. Okay. Now, I, 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 we will God get back to this. Yeah, but things if he doesn't our see ability. it. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. That's the, God, that's the problem. Well, God, God said, him, don't go don't into the go pit. Fall <laughs> the pit. That's right. Don't go fall into the pit. Right. Mm -hmm. so now, God, God's not going to yeah. do what's unjust. Now, he may right. do stuff that we don't understand how he works it all out. But he doesn't do anything that's unjust. Now, He's not dependent upon our ability to... The nature... Do something. Does, does God ask blind men to see? <laughs> no. Does God ask deaf men to hear? No. no. He asks blind people to look. He asks deaf people to listen. Can a blind man look and listen? Yeah, they can look. They can't see anything. But they can look and they can listen. But it's God who has to regenerate and give them the eyes in order to, in order to see. In order to see and, and, and in order to hear. Now, the nature of our blindness is that we have plucked our own eyes out. That's the nature of our blindness. If you pluck your own eyes out, you can't very well be mad if somebody's upset at you for not seeing. Because you did it to yourself. Okay? And this is what I mean by genuine will, and this is what I mean by not under compulsion. In other words, when the unbeliever doesn't doesn't look at God, you say, "Look over there." It's just like, I don't want to look over there. The restraint comes from his fallen human nature. Okay, so the restraint comes from his fall. Now I'm going to get to the point where God does write the script anyway. Did Samson know that his eyes would be plucked out uh, when he was playing with Delilah? I don't think he knew. I hope not. That would be pretty stupid. That would be pretty dumb. Okay. Doesn't say that he knew. I don't know why. He, I don't know why he wouldn't have caught on that something bad was going to happen because he kept telling Delilah that, oh, if you, you know, if you tie my hands with the special rope, then, and then so she ties her hands with the special rope and he breaks free and he, you know, he, he. So I don't know why he wouldn't have known that eventually one of those things would have caught up to him. Yeah. But, oh well, what do you do? Pride. Right. Yeah, pride. Pride. Okay. So, now, we have this objection specifically answered in Romans chapter 9. Because they're saying then God's not fair. If he asks us to do what we can't do, then God's not fair. Now, number one, the reason we can't do it, yes, it does have to do with the, the eternal plan of God, but God didn't predestine it in such a way that it's beyond what you wanted to do. You don't want to receive. These people don't want to receive Christ. They're not beating down the door of Christ and him saying, no, you're not elect. You're not elect. You've got to stay out. That's not, that's not what's, look, what's looked at here. In Romans chapter 9 and in verse 19, I hate pushing this off to the next lecture, but we will cover this more in depth in the next lecture. I just want to get this objection out of the way that he commands what you, what you can't do. And in verse 19... He says, you will say to me then, why does he still find fault for who resists his will? Now, that's the very objection that this person is dealing with. He's saying, well, this is all predestined anyway, and God's telling us to look, and we can't look. Well, isn't that unfair? Isn't that unfair? Who can resist his will, right? What's his answer to this? Who are you, old man? His answer is, shut up. <laughs> that's his answer. <laughs> Really, I mean, it's who are you, oh man, is kind of the technical word, but really that's what he's getting at. He's going to say, look, mm -hmm. shut up. I'm God. I'm going to do things that you're not capable of understanding, and I'm not bound by what you can and cannot understand. He's saying, basically, yeah, that's the objection. Well, is God being unfair? It's like, well, no, because no, God has the right over the clay. But God is able to do it in such a way that you're not under, or at least you don't feel as though you're under compulsion. You don't walk around going, oh, I want to do evil, I want to do evil, and I don't want to love God, and I want to do it on a robot. That's, he's able to make it the other way. Okay. All right, so this answer is answered. I'm going to say this is answered. Now we're going to move on to a couple of other objections in the time that we 
have left. Okay, so two other objections that are worth note to us, and they're very, uh, very interesting. And the one is the Adam objection. Adam. So what about Adam? Well, what about Adam? This is what they mean. God said, and this is this actually came out of Norman Geisler's. Um, <laughs> Norman Guy, yeah, Norman Geisler's uh, chosen but free in his uh, lecture, Five Reasons I'm Not a Five-Point Calvinist. Uh, and he said, well, you say that man's dead, and, uh, and, uh, and Adam said that when he ate the tree, and the day you eat thereof, you will die. And Adam was still able to respond to God. Why aren't you able to respond to God? And we feel, kind of feel the weight of that. Well, okay. First of all, that's not what happened. <laughs> Adam did not respond to God, at least favorably. As we looked last week, as soon as they sinned, and God came into the picture... What did they do? Did they run up to they God? Hid. They hid. They hid. God had to single them out. And even when God singled them out, what did they do? They Make blamed. Excuse. Blame Make game. Excuse. Blame game. Blame but, game. But, but. Right? Blame game. So, first of all, to say, to, to make this blanket statement that, well, Adam respond to God in the day if you eat, you'll die. And I believe he did die spiritually that day. And then can't we respond? No. Okay, that's not what happened. As, as a matter of fact, if there's any um, analogy here, it would be the Calvinistic analogy, that God had to go chase him down. And God had to make a sacrifice for him and say, here, put these on. He didn't dangle them out in front of him and say, look, if you want to be redeemed, come on over here. He said, put these on. They're yours now. Your fig leaves aren't enough. So no. The animal skins. The animal skins. He, no. He, Adam did not respond to God. Adam responded to God then like a sinner responds to God, runs by denial away. and, and runs, runs away. away. By denial and running away. So that's not, that is actually not what happened at all. The second thing is this is a completely unfair analogy. Okay? And the reason why it's an unfair analogy is because Adam went from spiritual life to spiritual death. And he's the only person in all of history mm. who was spiritually alive and, we and went death. to spiritual death. Okay? Mm. So to compare Joe B over here, sorry, I didn't mean Joe B. <laughs> I don't know if you're offended when people see people say Joe 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 B or average Joe or something like that. That's not what I meant though. Oh, but no. you know, an average person over here and say well, Adam responded to God, so he can respond to God. No. Adam went from spiritual life to spiritual death. This person's born spiritually dead. Okay? So that's an unfair analogy that the person uh, has imposed. Okay. All right. Now, the last objection that we'll deal with. And this is actually a very sophisticated objection. And that is what I call uh, the dead to sin mm. objection. Okay? Object a dead to sin but free to sin. Now, Matt. Did Matt bring this up? Yep. Okay. That was the. Exactly. M A T T, Matt? Yeah, as a person that we both know. Okay. So here's the objection. The objection is, is that you Calvinists say that man's dead to sin. And by dead, you mean unable to respond. Okay, dead. We're all the thing that, that dead means, right? You know, laying there, unable to respond, like Lazarus in the tomb. But doesn't the Bible also say that the old man has been crucified with Christ mm. and that uh, uh, and that you are uh, no longer slaves of sin, that, you're that you've died to sin. 
Romans well, 6. Yeah, but now if you're still dead to sin, can and you, the Bible says you're dead to sin, can you still choose to sin? Yeah, we do it all the time, right? We do it all the time. So then the objection goes, well, if you're dead to sin, if the Bible says you're dead to sin and you can still sin, then how come when the Bible says you're dead in sin, you can't be free to choose life? You see the objection. Okay. Now, first of all, I want to say this is a very, very clever objection. Okay, and it and it is worth it is it is worth our attention. Um, but this boils down to this boils down to a couple of things: a misrepresentation of the Calvinist view uh, of, of death. Okay, so um, okay, so a misrepresentation of the Calvinist view of death, and what this this what this really proves is that people don't know how to use a concordance. Okay, that's what it proves in the end is that people, okay, people don't know how to use a concordance. Okay? A Bible concordance. You know what a Bible concordance is? Mm -hmm. It's where you look it up in one word and you look at all those places. Yeah, like I have them this much. Yeah. <laughs> Whose do you have? It's that, that blue, that, um, brown one. I don't know. Who, who's, what, Strong's. what name? Is it Strong's? Strong's, yeah. Thanks. We have, we have yeah. a Strong. Do you have the Thayer's? Yes. Yeah. Thayer's is kind of a standard. Strong's is good too. Oh, but yeah. Thayer's is kind of a standard. Okay. So, does the Bible say we're dead in sin and then leave it at that for you to guess what it says, what it means? No. No, it doesn't. It gives you a definition of what death means as far as sin is concerned. Unable. Unable. It specifically Cannot. says you're unable. Okay? Now, here's the mistake. The mistake is, is that, now, in one sense, we want to understand this. Because when you're looking up biblical words, you want to see how biblical words are used elsewhere. That's fine. But in the end, context rules the day. And to be so, and I'm going to do that too. I'm going to look up different words and how they're used in different places. That's okay to do. However, here's the mistake. The mistake is to think that the Bible only uses the word the same way every time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the mistake that's being made here. The Bible doesn't use the same word the same way every time any more than you use the same word every time. Okay, that is, that's that's the simple problem with this. The Bible doesn't use the same word the same way every time any more than you use the same word the same way every time. Like sick. We just had this conversation I'm two sick. days ago. I don't feel well. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, right. The context rules the day. Now, the context of death when it comes to the Calvinistic view specifically means and says unable to come. Cannot respond. It specifically says that. Does it say that we're dead to sin? Yes, it does. But what does it mean by that? What's the context of that? The context is twofold. One, it's proleptic. What's proleptic? Okay, so first of all, the Bible uses the term death of dead people, too, right? Lazarus was dead in the tomb. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing as dead in spiritual, spiritual trespasses? No. no. It's a, it might, they might overlap. You might mean both the same thing. But that's not what it means at that time. When you come across a dead body and you say, oh, look, I found a dead body. I don't mean dead spiritually. I mean he's dead physically. Okay? So, and this is, this is a good thing. To, oh, let me digress here. So, pro, wait a minute. Uh, sorry. Got a couple of thoughts going here. So, proleptically. Pro, proleptically. What's proleptic mean? I have no idea. Okay, I'd like so to know. Look yes. the word up. I may have spelled it wrong. Proleptically, we use it all the time on people who are on death row. We say dead man walking. Oh. Mm. What do we mean by that? What's coming. It means what's coming. What's coming is assured. But it doesn't mean that he's dead yet. Okay? That's assured that he's going to die. And when the Bible uses the term that you are dead to sin, it means that proleptically. It's not talking about a current state of reality. Now we know this 
And here's the other problem with this. Here's a Romans 7. We, right? Is that we don't have one nature. No. Mm. We have, what do we have? Two. 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 Two natures. Now let me say this, and this might shock you. The new nature, we have a new nature and an old nature, right? <coughs> yes. okay. The new nature is dead. And I mean that just the same way over here. The new nature, and this is how I know this. If you only had the new nature, would you ever sin? No. 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 The new nature it is dead to sin. I wouldn't be born of Adam either. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, if you were born again, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 I don't know what you mean. The, the new nature is dead to sin. It is irreconcilable. It's not the new nature. That's... Paul says, I see two laws at work in me. It's not the new nature that's, that's alive to sin. That is dead to sin. It's the old nature that we still wrestle with that is proleptically dead. So this one's actual dead. So I will say the new nature is actually dead. Actually dead. In the same way that this is dead over here in the Calvinistic set. And I would say the old nature is proleptic, proleptically dead. So it's dead in the same way that a chicken gets its head cut off. Hmm. Oh. Have you ever seen a chicken get its head cut off? That's fine. Yeah, it's still <laughs> wiggling. It's still, still wiggling runs around. around. Yeah. It runs around, but its death is certain. It's dead, so dead that it can be called dead, uh, even though it's still... Imminent. Right? It's yeah. still well, it's doing stuff. There. It's still working. It's like it, when you sever a human head, it, the brain still functions for approximately two and a half minutes. Yeah. Be, and that's why the samurai used to cut the heads off and then hold them up to see, show that the person they decapitated their, their body. Yeah. So they would see their decapitated body on the ground. Yeah, yikes. Yuck. So, but in essence, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead, proleptically dead. Yeah. And well, he's, he's on he's, his way out. Yeah. It's, it's unquestionable. Yeah. So There's after no... they cut their head, sometimes <coughs> they their eyes were wriggling or something like that? They did oh, yeah, they can totally look around and see things. And yeah. They oh, did yeah. that with people, actually, to see if they would respond and it stuff so like that. It is so funny how much of this we've been discussing these situations with in the last Ugh. three, four days. Okay. We were just talking about this on Sunday. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> so Islam's coming to town. <laughs> so the answer to this, the answer to this question is, is that there's, it's not like the Bible, the Bible says in the Calvinistic scheme that you're dead to sin and there's no, uh, there's no definition given. There's a definition given. And the definition is unable, can't respond, blind, can't hear, all those things. There's also a definition given over here. It says the new nature, we have two natures, and the new nature is actually dead to sin. It's not our new nature that sins. It's the proleptically dead. It's the old nature that we still have living within us. Paul says, I have two natures. I have two, well, he says two laws at work within me. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I think that answers. That's an awesome new word. So after they chop their head, can the person say, I'm not dead yet? The no, they can't. They they can't because speak. their vocal cords are in their neck. They oh, can't oh, talk, oh, 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 yeah. and they have no lungs to get air out of. Ah, good point. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any questions about this? This. Uh, any other objections to total depravity? None. None. Okay. I'm cutting your All right. Would you pray for us? Father God, thank you for this uh, beautiful evening and for this uh, study and this lesson. And Lord, let us just take your words and uh, put them into our lives and understand them and, and not be uh, so willing to just go with the flow, but be willing to look at your word and what it truly says. And Lord, we just praise you for the opportunity to be able to come together. It's in your name. Amen. 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 I can't stay long. I gotta get moving. Oh, really?